Hi, this is Ralph Wilson with Web Marketing Today. I'm at PubCon in Las Vegas, and here with me is Andy Beal of Marketing Pilgrim. Andy, uh, you contribute such a lot of stuff to the internet marketing community. Uh, what I want to talk uh, today about is, I guess, something you've written a book on. What's the title of your book? It's uh, Radically Transparent. Okay, and what's it about? Uh, basically, it's all about uh, the importance of businesses and, and individuals building, uh, managing, monitoring, and repairing their reputation on the internet. Okay. Well, let's talk about the building aspect mm -hmm. today. So, how does a how does a business work? And I'm my audience is primarily small to medium businesses. How do you build uh, your reputation on the internet? What are some of the things you might su suggest? Well, um, certainly with with the internet, the, the one of the best things you can do is to build a presence, build a footprint. And uh, it really doesn't matter how you do that. There are lots of different channels, but for the most part, having your own website is going to be the first step to doing that. So having a having a website that is easy to navigate, that clearly talks about who you are, your brand, and that, that that's the same whether it's an individual, whether it's your own personal blog, or whether it's a company and you have a company website. Um, some of the aspects we recommend is that you have clear navigation, that it's easy for people to quickly figure out who you are and what your company provides. Uh, maybe provide a media room so that they can see all your latest news. Um, so the web, your own personal website, your own corporate website is the first place to start on that. Okay. So what else? Website. Uh, I mean, a lot of people have built websites sure. now, but what's the next step? So the next step uh, is really social media is uh, a big thing. And it doesn't necessarily mean that you have to dive in and create your own blog or your own social networking profile, but look for opportunities to engage those that are out there holding conversations about your brand. Because really there are, your customers, customers are out there, they're discussing your products, your services, and so you want to not only listen to that, but you want to almost figure out a way to kind of join that conversation. So now when you say social media, a lot of people who are uh, 30 and below uh -huh. understand exactly what sure. you mean. But some who are 30 and above uh -huh. may wonder, what, what some, are some examples of social media that we might want to engage in? So uh, a great example is uh, something such as MySpace, creating a profile on MySpace. And you don't have to be under 30 to create a, a profile on my, MySpace. It's actually starting to skew. Even Facebook, which is another popular social network, um, it, it is skewing now towards business professionals. Hmm. It's a great place for you to connect with people that you went to school with, people that uh, are in the same company, if it's a large company, same business network. Uh, it's a great way for you to, to share yourself. Now that's either you personally, and that is, okay, this is who I am, these are my interests, this is why you should trust me, this is, this is my opportunity to kind of almost put a living, breathing online mm -hmm. resume. For businesses, Facebook maybe not so much, it's, it's geared towards individuals, but MySpace. Uh, MySpace is a fantastic opportunity for a business to create the official MySpace page, okay. where you know if you've got fans and advocates, the people that love your products and really enjoy every time you launch a new service or a new product, they can go on and say, hey, let's let's talk about the the, the new MP3 player or the new computer or the new car that you've got now, coming out. Now how does someone find your MySpace page? I mean, you, you put one up, and now now how do you even how do you, how do people even know you're there? You're absolutely right. It's not a case of if you build it, they, they will come. It's not like a Kevin Costner movie. But the great thing is a lot of these social media uh, networks, profiles, um, and social media covers networks, profiles, blogs, but they're all very search engine friendly for one thing. So you put it up there, just a, f a few things. Make sure that you use your company name in your profile or if, it's, if you're trying to promote your own personal brand, make sure you use your own personal name. Don't go by a nickname or some okay. cute thing that your, your wife happens to call you. It's, you know, that, that, that's not gonna get you branded. Um, and then, uh, y y you know, make sure that it's uh, linked to from your blog or your okay. corporate website. Now, now tagging is mm -hmm. important in all these social media. So what kind of tagging things should, should you do to be found? Uh, tagging is uh, one of the uh, great things I've seen is, uh, is tagging the content that you produce. Okay. So if you produce a blog post, uh, most people now are getting familiar with the idea of, okay, if I put a blog post up there, let me tag this post. So that services such as the blog search engine Technorati, it's looking for posts and seeing what they're tagged with so that it can tell its users, okay, mm -hmm. here you searched for iPod, here are some blog posts that put the tag iPod on their post. You might be interested in this. Um, but any kind of content, your press releases that you send out, um, there's a great move towards social media optimized press releases. So that's another okay. jargon term for everybody to learn, but it's basically saying, okay, we now understand that press releases are circulating online. We know that the search engines are picking up on press releases, so most people are kind of getting to the point now where 
when they write their press release, they're going to talk about you know, the product or the, the key phrase in their title and in their press release. But what about making it uh, easier for the, um, uh, the social networks to pick up on that? What about making it easier for someone to add that to Dig? Mm. Dig is a very powerful social bookmark insight where people say, okay, I love this particular piece of web content, I vote for it. If enough other people agree with you and they vote for it, get onto the Dig homepage and you get that beautiful influx of traffic that everybody here at the conference is talking about. So why not put buttons on, on at the bottom of your uh, your press release saying, hey, if you like this press release, if you think it's significant news, uh, here's some tags that we suggest. Okay. But, but here's also the, the links for you to submit it to Delicious, to submit it to Dig. So make it easy for people to bookmark with their favorite bookmarking service. Absolutely, because it's no longer a case of, uh, uh, you, you know, uh, bookmarking in, in your Internet Explorer browser, which is a a closed system where only you get to see your bookmarks, people are starting to share their love of websites online. Mm -hmm. uh, a couple of years ago, I personally switched over to Delicious. Yeah. And so I downloaded all of my bookmarks from my browser, put them all into Delicious, a lot, and I tagged them. Yeah. So now it's a lot easier for me to find them, but now I can decide if I want to share those with other people so, and say, hey, look, I found this great piece of software. Here's what it is, here's what it's about. You might want to check it out. Now, search engines, uh, control some of those for links back to your site and some I guess are not search engine friendly so that people I guess they do that so that people don't abuse them absolutely yeah there whenever you have a good thing it's always open to abuse right so there are some services now that uh, they, they want to cut down on you know the people that want to spam yeah. their service yeah. and so you do want to keep an eye out for um, services where they're going to add what they call the nofollow attribute, which basically says, hey, Google, yeah, I am linking to this piece of content, but I'm not too sure about it, you know, its validity, so mm -hmm. please don't pass on any kind yeah. of vote for it. Any other tips on how to build your, your reputation online? Um, building your reputation online, get in front of the people that you, your peers and the people that you know are the leaders in your industry. A uh, great way to do that. Like is me talking to you. <laughs> <laughs> or me talking to you. Uh, uh, it's, a, it's a great opportunity to network. Twitter. Twitter is uh, it's not just a it's not just a distraction where people just broadcast. Hey, I'm going to go get a cup of coffee at Starbucks. I'm seeing a lot of people using Twitter for branding, and what they're doing is they're signing up to follow all of the thought leaders in their industry, and then they are watching what they have to say, gleaning information from them. A lot of a lot of chatter goes on on Twitter, a lot of thought leadership that never makes it hmm. onto that person's blog or into okay. their website, and so they're learning things there. If you then, if someone on Twitter, let's say, for example, everybody, you know, most people are familiar with Robert Scoble or Guy Kawasaki. Let's say they're having a problem with their site and they want some advice and they put it on Twitter. You could potentially send them a direct message or send them an email and say, hey, I saw, that, I saw you mentioned on Twitter that you were looking for a piece of software. Here's what I recommend. Okay. You get on their radar screen. If you start getting into a conversation with them, if Robert Scoble starts replying to your tweets, if you like, okay. he's going to let his entire network, hey, there's somebody over here that I'm having a really great conversation with. Those people are going to go, who is that person? Why is Robert Scoble giving them the time of day? <laughs> okay. Maybe I should check, check them out and see, yeah. see what kind of thought leadership they have. You've had a number of tips on how to promote your business online. Tell us about your business. What do you do? Well, it's, uh, it's, it's pretty much spread out right now, but uh, right now I'm an independent marketing consultant. I'm also the uh, founder and editor of Marketing Pilgrim, which is an internet marketing news site where we, we, we kind of digest the internet marketing news for everybody and add a little bit of opinion. And, and I read it carefully. Well, thank you. I, we, we try to make it engaging. We try to kind of not just regurgitate. We try to add some thoughts to it. And then the last six months, I'm actually really enjoying a little bit of peace right now because the last six months, uh, co-authoring a book, uh, myself and uh, Dr. Judy Strauss, we have a book coming out, uh, Radically Transparent, as we already mentioned. And it's, it's a book that we promise it's going to be the complete guide. Everything from why you need to understand your online reputation, how to jump in and build a blog, optimize your press releases, get a better Google reputation how to monitor what's said about you, so when things happen and people are talking about your business, and then if you do get into a crisis, how to repair that so that you repair your good, good reputation. Well, thank you very much for sharing with us. We appreciate it. Thank you. This is Ralph Wilson with Web Marketing Today.